Why is Astro so excited? Let's talk about it. Yes, right. What's up? All oh, right. One play. What is going on, everybody? How? Oh, y'all doing before we get started with this video give it a thumbs up like like subscribe all that fun stuff all right let's get to the meat and potatoes it's been a few months since the two next gen consoles have launched talking about the playstation 5 xbox series x we all know that Nintendo and the Switch Pro heavily rumored to be coming out in holiday 2021. But for this video, I want to ta um, tackle the very, the very controversial and real subject of why is the PlayStation 5 outselling the Xbox Series X now? The easy cop out is the whole semiconductor shortage. Both companies, both companies are suffering from a semiconductor shortage where they are not able to get as many consoles out as possible. And whenever I say this, the well, Sony's out selling PlayStation 5, 6 million sold, Xbox. Um, I think just past 4 million sold. It looks like Sony's going to run away with this. And I've heard Obi-Wan. It's because Xbox can't get as many consoles out as possible. Sony is suffering from the same issue. And so I think the whole console supply constraint is a cop out. It's all hypothetical because we don't know what the sales would be like if both consoles had ample supply. And to be honest, to be honest, I think if there was no shortage, if Sony and Xbox could make as many consoles as they wanted, I really think Sony, the gap would be wider and Sony would be outpacing Xbox by even more. And so that's all hypothetical. What I want to talk about in this video is what we know for sure and why I see and why I believe the PlayStation 5 is not just outpacing um, Xbox, why they're doing that, but why it looks like it's going to be like that for most of this generation. And I'm going to start off by saying, because dudes think, oh, Obi-Wan, um, what happened, bro? You used to like Xbox and now uh, Sony, Sony this, Sony that. I still like Xbox. <laughs> Believe it or not, I like Xbox. When they had the December um december 2019 game awards reveal of the xbox series x bro i was so hyped i was like the console looks lit we've never seen a console with this vertical type design of course now we know that sony was doing the same thing all along but it looked amazing it screamed power and so i was like okay this definitely is going to be a next gen console and it is it is a next gen console i can't take that away from xbox but this is what happened they had a full xbox series x first look presentation and that's when the huge red flag went up i said to myself oh man they are not ready for next gen it doesn't look like 
because they had this presentation a lot of talking and a lot of cgi footage i remember i think it was either this presentation or the one they had right after where they showed blight infinite like this game and it looked crazy bro but then a whole bunch of red flags even came up with that game but the first presentation they fell flat on their face i was like this is their reveal of what games and what we should be hyped about for uh xbox i was like come on bro they completely misread the market misread gamers dirt 5 didn't do it i mean it, it was just a bland flat presentation nobody I haven't talked to one person that said that first Xbox Series X games presentation in 2020 was fire, bro. It was trash. Nothing but CGI footage. And then they had about two months later a games showcase. And the expectations were higher for this. And... It was just as bad, if not worse, than the previous presentation. And that's when I was like, y'all want me to buy a dope piece of hardware, but no compelling games to play on it. There was very little reason in both presentations to say, Okay, this warrants a $500. Well, they didn't have the price at this time, but this warrants a purchase for this new Xbox. And so, both presentations, Xbox fell flat on their face. Bro, and to top it off, we all know what happened when Halo Infinite was revealed. The Craig means an Xbox had to... I think they even apologized and delayed the game. The one exclusive they had. And I have to be honest. The game, it's not that the game looked bad. Xbox hyped this game up too much, bro. They put all their eggs in one basket. The CGI trailer they had, E3s before then, where they had like the rhinos running through the field and... This game looked like it was going to be the second coming of video game. And then they showed a game that looked like Halo 5, bro, on my Xbox One X. And don't get me wrong, Halo 5 looks beautiful. But I was expecting this is the most powerful console that y'all been touting. And this is what they shown. And so it was very bland. The enemies... Mm, looked a very Xbox One-ish, PlayStation 4-ish. Nothing that screamed next-gen with this game. And so, they delayed Halo. Their game reveals were horrible to roll out the new console. Now, compare that to Sony's only first presentation of the PlayStation 5. Bro, they started off the presentation with a banger. Spider-Man Miles Morales looked beautiful. And I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about the games later. But the point was, Sony, after their first game presentation, everybody left that presentation with, whoa, they're ready. They're ready because we saw not just great games, but we saw gameplay. This is why I was even surprised that Gran Turismo was delayed. Bro, they showed in the cockpit gameplay of Gran Turismo 7. This game looked finished. This is my hypothesis. They could have launched this game this year because it looks, it looks, it looks polished and complete. It's because the PlayStation 5s are still in short supply. And I think they want to continue to build the user base to launch more games like this. Just my um, theory, my hypothesis. But this game looked complete. They were ready for next generation, in my opinion. Another reason why Sony is beating Xbox. 
the controller. I know some dudes are just like Ubi One, it's just a controller, but it's not just a controller. This made the PlayStation 5 feel, feel like a next gen controller. Bro, everyone who gets a PlayStation 5, Astro, um, Astro Rescue Mission is included in it. I forget the name again. I don't know if it's Rescue Mission. Astro Bot Game is included in it. Hold this controller at the title screen. That's all I'm going to say. And it lets you know immediately why they were hyping up this controller. I've never, I've been gaming since the Atari 7800. Bought every major console since the Atari 7800. And never experienced anything like this. The accuracy of the feedback. Bro, when you're on a stage and the wind is blowing, you feel the direction the wind is blowing from in the controller. Crazy technology voodoo magic in this thing. And so, one of the re another reason, a next gen controller. I have an I have an X. This is how y'all can be like, uh, oh, he's not really uh, rocking with Xbox like that. But I bought every every single Xbox control uh, console. This past generation, I had the OG Xbox at launch, Xbox One at launch. I had the Xbox One S when it came out. I bought the Xbox One X when it came out, and so I was rocking with Xbox, bro. But they showed the controller, and I said to myself. I already have this controller. It was the same controller. They changed the texture of the D-pad, but other than that, the same. The controller summarizes what I felt Xbox did with this generation. Minimal effort to up improve. The controller is exactly the same. Going from the OG Xbox to the Xbox One, I mean to the Xbox 360. Of course, the general button layout is the same. That's cool. That's consistency. You want to do that with your user base. But I felt when I got my Xbox 360 controller, it's a new controller for a new console. Even from my Xbox 360 to my Xbox One, the same general layout, but it felt like a new next gen controller. You can use your Xbox One controller for your Xbox Series X because it's the same technology. And so another reason why I just felt like I'm not getting a next gen experience. I want to feel something new and fresh. Bro, even the user interface for the Xbox One to the Series X same exact UI. PlayStation 5, when you boot up your PlayStation 5, everything just looks new. I've heard people say, oh, it's just the same UI, but instead of the crossbar at the top, they put the crossbar at the bottom. Y'all, that's just blind hate. Because they added new features like the cards. You can, if you're trying to platinum games, you could pause, look at in-game hints on screen while you're playing. And so stuff like that, um, and how they integrated it into the system, it felt new. It felt different. And so with my Xbox Series X, um, well, I don't have one, but based on what I've seen, it's the same exact UI, um, the same user interface. I'm like, I'm not going to spend a warrant $500, a $500 purchase to buy the same thing. This is coming from a dude that buys every single console at launch every generation, bro. But I have not been compelled to buy the Series X so far. And you buy a console ultimately for games. And Sony delivered at launch with games. Ah. I'll be one. The game you're showing right now, Spider-Man Miles Morales. You can play that on your PlayStation 4. Bro, it's a new game 
that launched at the same time as a new console and has specific upgrades for the PlayStation 5. This game had over a 50% attach rate for the PlayStation 5, meaning it was a console seller. Even if some of the launch games were also available on the PlayStation 4, they were all new games launching at the same time as a new next-gen console, which sold consoles. Almost everybody I know that has a PlayStation 5 has Spider-Man Miles Morales. This game right here, Astro's Playroom, the perfect packing. This, in my opinion, was like one of the best packing titles for a console. I mean, Nintendo got some heavy hitters like Mario 64, um, Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. I'm not negating that. But this, as far as showing what the, cons the controller is all about, perfect packing title at launch. Sackboy, Big Adventure. This also came out on the PlayStation 4, but the PlayStation 5 was a definitive version, looked better, ran better, and even had in-game elements that were missing from the PlayStation 4 version. And so, another reason to buy a PlayStation 5 at launch. This is why I say, y'all cannot negate PS4, um, uh, Miles Morales and Astro's Playroom because the same dude that says oh it's also on the PlayStation 4 are the same dudes hyping up Gears of 5 high busters this was also on the Xbox one bro but I can't knock it it was a new content for a new console so this was still good kudos for Xbox for launching it even though it wasn't a full game it was DLC great at launch on the PS5, console exclusive, Godfall. Also on PC, but a console exclusive. Love this game from beginning to end. Say what you say about post-game content, but actually playing the game from beginning to end, fantastic launch game. Bro, probably my favorite PlayStation 5 launch game and a true console exclusive. The only place you can play Demon's Souls Remake was on the PlayStation 5. The game looked good, ran good. Dude said that I wouldn't beat it, beat the game. Bro, coming this month, Returnal, a true PlayStation 5 console exclusive. I'm making a point. Coming in June, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, a true PlayStation 5 console exclusive. Not on PC, not on the PlayStation 4. Kena Bridge of Spirit is also going to be uh, on the PC, but this isn't going to be, and my point is, all of the games I've just shown are not going to be on an Xbox platform at launch. Horizon Forbidden West or God of War coming this holiday. Sony's still claiming both are coming holiday 2021. I doubt it. One of these two will be delayed, but my point is, Sony has delivered with games and game release dates, both in 2020 and in 2021. The only huge console exclusives um, Xbox has is Halo Infinite. I know the medium came out, but come on, bro. The medium, those sales probably tanked. I'm not even looking at those sales because it, it was a blip on the radar. Nobody's talking about that game. That game came and went. Halo Infinite is the game. We still don't have a definitive release date. And who knows if this game is going to be delayed. I doubt it is going to be delayed. But this is their only exclusive for the first two years of the system. And I know, I know Xbox has purchased Bethesda. Here's the thing with even Bethesda that I know dudes are going to be upset. Xbox has not outright said no Bethesda games from this point on will be on the PlayStation 5. They've never said that. 
They've said it's going to be on a case by case basis. But they've never flat out said the next um, Skyrim or whatever sequel is not going to be on the PlayStation 5. Phil Spencer has said we don't need to put it on PlayStation 5, but they've never just said we're not putting our Bethesda deal games on the PlayStation 5. Why? They're probably going to have them on Game Pass day one and charge PlayStation 5 dudes $70. And so even the Bethesda deal, and I have to say, there's not, the only Bethesda games I've been hyped for are the Doom games. Never been hyped for that. Bro, Sony still got IPs like Uncharted in the works. And I'm going to end this with my last point for this video. The reason why I think Sony is going to continue to outsell Xbox this generation is Game Pass. At the end of the day, even if you've seen, even based on what you've seen with Microsoft's rollout for next gen, they're not ultimately trying to sell consoles. They're trying to sell this subscription service. All of the exclusives that come to the Xbox Series X will also be available on PC. Sony puts their exclusives on PC years after. The next Spider-Man game that launches will not also launch on PC. The next God of War Ragnarok, Ratchet and Clank, Horizon, Uncharted, those games are not launching day and date on PC. Why? Sony wants to sell consoles. If Sony, um, the only, Sony's not going the Game Pass route because they're making more money selling consoles and selling their games for $70 because their exclusives still sell great. And so at the end of the day, those are my reasons why Sony, the PlayStation 5 is outselling the Xbox Series X and I think they're going to continue to do that for the course of this generation. Interesting to see how this generation is going to play out with Sony focusing on console sales, Xbox focusing on subscription services, and Nintendo going the handheld route. I think every console manufacturer, and this really isn't, I never once said Sony's winning this generation. I just said why the PlayStation 5 is out, is out selling the Xbox because at the end of the day even without console sales Xbox can still make a good profit all right dudes what do you guys think about all my points all my reasons I'm interested to hear what the comment section for this video will be like sound off in the comment section below I want to know but before you go bro click that subscribe button stay up to date all things gaming bro we're out Peace. You still watching this video? That means you like me. You really like me. I gotta hook you up. That's right. I'm giving away a $60 digital code every month for your platform of choice. Xbox, Nintendo, or PlayStation. Two ways to enter. One, make sure you're subscribed to this fire right here on YouTube. Two, follow me on Twitter at Obi-Wan Plays. And that's it. You're in for the giveaway, but wait, there's more. Do you want to join an awesome gaming discord with prizes and tournaments? Do you want to get on my friend list and game with your boy? Become a sponsor. Three ways to join. One, subscribe on Twitch. If you have Twitch Prime, you can do it for free. Two, click the join button right here on YouTube and become a member. And the third way to join, patreon.com backslash ob1 plays you'll thank me later also check out the swag bro links are in the description i'll see you later Peace.